May 2022 Landmarks Committee for CB1. I'm Jason Friedman, the chair, and Vicki, the co-chair, is next to me on my screen. And um, I think, what do we have? Three items. So let's start with 60 what? 60 what? Here we go. Wall Street. 60 Wall Street. So please uh, get ready to present, and I'll write the resolution. Uh, you guys have the floor. 60 Wall Street. Thank you. Andrew, are you going to start? You can share the screen. If you if you have the screen, or would you like me to share with you? Uh, Stephen Fan from KPF uh, is going to be the presenter, and Hugh Trumbull from KPF should be on to present as well. Okay. I'm here. Okay, thank you. Can you can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, and uh, good evening, Committee Chair Friedman and Co-Chair Cameron, members of the Landmarks and Preservation Committee, and members of the public. My name is Andrew Scro, and I'm with Paramount Group. And on behalf of the ownership of 60 Wall Street, we'd like to thank you for your time this evening uh, and hearing our proposal. As many of you know, Deutsche Bank, who has been the single tenant of this building for many years, will be moving out this summer. Their leaving has afforded us the opportunity to make significant upgrades to both the interior and exterior of the building to best position the building for new tenants, but also to, to make important improvements to the building, its ground floor public spaces in the building and making it as open and inviting as possible. As this is a landmarks and preservation committee and as Melanie Myers from Freed Frank will discuss in a minute, we are presenting our proposal to update and maintain the harmonious relationship between the facades of 60 Wall Street and our neighbor at 55 Wall Street. We believe our proposal is a welcome update to the existing facade at 60 Wall Street and is in keeping with the context and the existing character of the block by infusing the public space with more light and air, creating a more inviting exterior with upgraded materials that will better align with our neighbors and improve the existing streetscape and the pedestrian experience along the block. I will now turn it over to Melanie Myers to provide a bit of background on the building and the reasons why we are here tonight. And then she will turn it over to Hugh Trumbull from Cone Peterson and Fox, who will lead us through the presentation and the project plans for the facade. Thank you. I'll turn it over to Melanie. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you for having us. My name is Melanie Myers. I'm a land use attorney with the law firm of Fried Frank, Harris Shriver, and Jacobson, representing the ownership. So as Andrew said, we're here to talk about 60 Wall Street. It's a late 1980s office building on the north side of Wall Street between William and Pearl Street. Uh, we're here tonight for a relatively discreet reason and request that relates to a finding that the Landmarks Preservation Commission made at the time that 60 Wall Street was originally approved. It's not a typical uh, condition, at, at least in our opinion, or request. So I wanted to give a little bit of background before Hugh and the KPF team describe the proposal. So thank you for your indulgence with this. Um, so 60 Wall was built uh, pursuant to a special permit that was granted in 1984 that, among other things, increased the floor area on the site through two mechanisms. The first is the building received a floor area bonus of about 150,000 square feet, give or take, uh, for the provision of a large covered pedestrian space within the base of the building. And second, it also received a special permit that allowed for the transfer of about 363,000 square feet of development rights from the landmark 55 Wall Street, uh, currently the home of Ciprianis, under zoning resolution section 7479. So as part of that original approval, as part of the landmarks transfer, LP LPC issued a report commenting on the harmonious relationship between 55 Wall and the proposed 60 Wall Street as a requirement of the condition, as a condition of the special permit. So the harmonious relationship, which is why we're here today, it's not like the typical certificate of appropriateness sort that the com committee usually sees where there is a proposal that would directly alter a landmark. Rather, this finding, this report, is when there is a new building that's being built using development rights from a landmark. And it looks at the new building and provides a general assessment of the relationship that's created between the new building and the landmark in terms of materials, the articulation of the facade and other features. 
Um, the building was built more than 30 years ago. And as Andrew said, the owners are taking this opportunity of the uh, switch in, in tenancy to propose upgrades to the building, including both the covered pedestrian space and the facade at the base. Uh, the changes to the covered pedestrian space will be before the, com the community board in the next months, but it's the exterior changes that are being proposed that are being proposed that are before the committee tonight. In particular, we're asking landmarks to issue a new report commenting on the harmonious relationship of the new facade design to 55 Wall Street. And this is what is the single matter that's before the committee today. Um, as Andrew said, we believe that the KPF design is an updated, lighter, and more inviting facade than what exists today, but it's also one that maintains a strong relationship with 55 Wall through the use of materials, columns, and screening elements that are reflective of 55 Wall Street, but contemporary in approach. So thank you for the, your patience. Um, I hope this introduction was helpful, and I will turn it over to Hugh Trumbull to walk through the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, great uh, start to the, the presentation. So if we go to the next slide, um, you know, it very clearly, as Melanie had uh, outlined, that we're looking for a harmonious relationship. So if we go to the next slide, um, you'll see that we are really thinking about how our building fits in and this idea of harmony uh, with 55, which is a building on the right with the wonderful uh, double stacked colonnade, the Cipriani uh, flag out front, uh, and its relationship to our proposed 60 Wall Street is an important uh, development within the neighborhood. And it uh, is important that not only that there is a, a harmonious relationship for us with the Cipriani and the 55 uh, <clears throat> Wall Street building, but also the bigger context of the neighborhood and this idea of fitting in and really resonating uh, with the whole neighborhood was something that we thought is absolutely paramount to um, the design exercise and what we bring forth today. So if we move to the next slide, if you would. And just to look at the context a little bit, next slide. Uh, looking at the whole project really from the bird's view way, way up high, uh, we look down on Manhattan and we see uh, 60 Wall Street and its relationship to, to 55 Wall Street across the street. Uh, and what we notice about this uh, part of Manhattan is it's really, uh, our architects like to talk, to talk about the sort of cracked mud neighborhoods that are here. So it's a series of uh, smaller intimate streets a lot of which are fixed end and have really a spatial quality to them. Uh, and that there are kind of two aspects to the context. It's this uh, intimate street, which is really part of the historic nature of uh, downtown Manhattan. And it's this wonderful skyline that happens uh, up above. And there's a really interesting aspect about how dense Manhattan is and how the skyline and the experience of the street are some, sometimes a little bit divorced. Uh, and that is really uh, something that we experience uh, at 60 Wall Street when we look at it. So we've been really focused uh, a lot on the, the intimate relationship of the street. So if we go to the next slide, what we see here are three images as you move around the existing uh, the building today. And on the right and on the left are views looking from the east and looking from the west. Uh, and what you notice in those views is a lot of the experience of the building is, is predicated on a, uh, a collapsed uh, a viewpoint um, where you really see the facade uh, on, on the oblique and the, the colonnade or the screen that defines the facade really collapses and it becomes more solid. At the center is an image, which is uh, a rather odd moment and a very special moment within Manhattan, a very small fixed end street uh, in which you get a perpendicular view to the facade. And it's, on, it's only in this condition that you can see the deep space within the colonnade and then into the, the building beyond. And so for us, this was kind of really exciting um, phenomenon in terms of architecture. And what we wanted to play up was this idea that the building could collapse in space and become more wall-like as you moved on the oblique 
and then when you got to the perpendicular that there would be um, some relief and uh, invitingness that would come into into the building uh, so with that said we move forward to the next uh, slide we'll talk a little bit about the history of the building if you go to the next slide uh, this is an image of uh, 55 Wall Street, and it illustrates the building uh, with its uh, superimposed orders, Ionic on the bottom, which is really the original building. And then later on, McKinley, Mead and White created an addition, which put the second colonnade, which is a Corinthian order, on top of that, and it really came up with this wonderful civic building uh that really sets the stage for wall street as you move up and down and this idea that the loggia or the colonnade that's there is really representing a more civic building and has wonderful public space that's inside of it and many of you have probably been to the cipriani uh, large hall which sits right behind the first floor colonnade or the first and second floor colonnade there the other thing that's quite interesting about this particular image is in the foreground of this image, you see the blank slight uh, of the site for 60 Wall Street. This is before the original proposal was constructed, and it was really the site that um, where, where the building was built. So if you go to the, the next image, uh, this is, and Melanie did a very nice job of going through this before, but uh, the original uh, building was built. Uh, there was an approval um, which had a special permit and it had a, a requisite area and number of stories and there were bonuses for both its relationship to 55 Wall Street but also bonuses in area for the covered pedestrian uh, plaza. So if we go to the next. Now this is uh, two images. The one on the left is the full elevation of the facade. The one on the right is a zoomed in element of the podium. And what you notice is the original building is a uh, kind of a composite building of a uh, very strong postmodern top and base, and then a rel relatively modernist midsection uh, within the building following the classic uh, base middle top. Uh, zooming in on the base of the building, which is really the, the, this part of the streetscape that we're talking about, you see that there is a Egyptianate order, uh, which is relating to the, the Greek or Roman order across the street somehow, and that it has a series of horizontal layers that stack up. So you have the colonnade layer and then a uh, frieze and then another layer and another layer. And the, the orders are quite different as they move up, unlike the, the building across the street where there's a very subtle relationship between Ionic and Corinthian as they stack up. So as we move forward into the, into the deck, uh, we see that the original findings uh, for approval were based on a number of issues. One, that it was a contemporary and sensitive response to 55. It wasn't a, um, a historic response necessarily, but at the time when postmodern architecture was in its heyday, that was the contemporary response. Uh, that the colonnade of the base uh, had a relationship with the 55, that it felt integrated into the context. That's that neighborhood kind of quality that we're talking about and that the height, rhythm, and massing of the building and the colonnade really respected and had a wonderful dialogue with 60 Wall Street. That the choice of materials within the facade was complementary to 55 and, you know, for the most part, the whole neighborhood. That the tower and the podium worked together, um, that they, uh, I think what really ended up happening is that the podium was set forward, the tower sets back, there's a series of terraces that make the transition, and that was deemed to be a, a sensitive response of the way that the tower or almost that skyline world comes down and meets this very uh, beautiful, intimate world of the, the city street. Uh, and then lastly, that because we're on the north side, that no shadows would be cast. There was a small variation that happened in 86, which was some reorganization of the facade, a loading dock was taken out, um, but overall the big big picture it remained the same. Next. 
So uh, this is uh, the building as it stands today, uh, image a uh, little, little older, but uh, what you see is this uh, very heavy uh, colonnade that is a composition of bundles of columns, two pair over two pair, or almost a bundle of four in the elevation that makes, makes up the depth of the uh, uh, colonnaded space. Uh, that behind that is a little bit of a, a wall um, that's uh, not directly related to the colonnade, but has some dark glass in it. Uh, if we move forward, we set and looking at the facade, what, what can we do? So we know, first off, we wanted to maintain this contemporary design that was very harmonious to the neighborhood and to 55 in particular, and that we wanted to go a step further and really celebrate what we think is one of the great public spaces uh, in Manhattan, which is this uh, covered pedestrian way that links uh, Pine Street with Wall Street and also provides access to the subway from down below. So those are our goals. Now, moving forward to the next slide, if you will. We highlight here in a couple of elements, some things that we noted uh, and the existing fa facade that we thought we could improve. So first on the left is a small bullet hole that shows a, uh, the nature of the glass. And it's actually a quite dark glass uh, that defines the uh, viewing uh, window into the public space. And the other thing that's uh, very apparent immediately is these uh, bundles of columns that they have uh, uh, bases to those columns, which are quite heavy and make it actually quite difficult to move around in the arcade and get access to the public space beyond. And then as you start to move up through the facade of the podium, you notice that, yes, there is a, a sensitive uh, response in terms of materials, though it'd be a little bit uh, red compared to the, the context, which is a rose granite that was used, and that the back wall behind the colonnade isn't really as supportive of the colonnade and the presence of the facade as we thought it could be. And then as you step up into the higher realms of the podium, that the order, uh, the style really kind of seems a little bit jumpy in terms of transitions as it moves to uh, the top or the, the, the base of the tower. So if we um, that, go to the next slide, please. What you see is a, a series of circles that really highlight each one of those conditions again and what we tried to do to improve it. So maybe if we go to the next slide where you can see the full composition of how it comes together, we're um, really trying to uh, allow for the transparency into the public space to be, become present. And again, this concept of when you're on the oblique, uh, the wall seems to collapse and become solid. When you turn to the perpendicular, you get the transparency. So it's defining the street, this defining its relationship with 55, but it is also allowing a lot more light to enter into the space and become more, much more welcoming. That this idea of the McKinney Mead in white stacked columns, the superimposed columns, would really become much more celebrated within the facade. That we would use a series of modern-like screens, uh, maybe simplified in their nature, that run the full height of the facade, and then secondary screens that were inset within them that the screens would become um, a change in scale and texture to define more private and more public spaces. So the more open, the more public, the, more, the, the tighter the, the, the texture, the more private the spaces. And that it would be this wonderful uh, composition of not only superimposed columns on top of each other, but also integrated within each other. Um, so that the, the old language of yesteryear was brought into a very new and contemporary way. And that the order overall seems to be this very nice uh, transition that will lead up into the tower into a series of strip windows, which is really the, the base of the tower. So I, I know there's, there's a lot there to unpack, but we think that that is really making a much more sensitive uh, response to the overall streetscape and allowing to us to achieve the two goals mentioned. 
if we go to the next slide, um, a, a parallel study here with the full tower um, uh, that you can see. And from this kind of distant view of the image on the left, it looks pretty close to being the same as the previous uh, proposal for 60 Wall Street, the existing condition. And then on the right, you can see the orders being transposed into these series of screens that become in increased in their uh, density and layer and uh, make the transition to the, the tower facade. Uh, if we go to the next. Um, so this is a, a plan view uh, looking at the streets, both Wall Street and Pine Street on either side of the, the POPs space or the covered pedestrian uh, space that has access to the MTA. Uh, the plan itself is rendered in such a way that the black is uh, really the building footprint and the white is the space of the street. And the space of the street in this case really flows through the arcade as well as the public space. And then rendered in uh, the lighter grays or, or in some ways public spaces which integrate with the street. So for instance, at 55 Wall Street, the, the great public hall of the Cipriani is rendered as being part of the civic nature of the environment. For us, the, the, the pop space is a continuous flow of the street and that's the way we would like it to be, like it to be perceived. And the lobby becomes a little bit more private. So in our proposal, the big difference is if we go to the next slide, um, you see the, the dialogue is the same, but we're really trying to expand the presence of the space. So it opens up the whole facade and allows for transparency um, through from Pine to Wall Street in such a way that the public space and the private space have a little bit more overlap and dialogue, but that the uh, arcade space is much more uh, usable and becomes a, a continuous element of the streetscape. We go to the next image. Here's an existing condition of the, the pops as it stands today. And one of the things that you notice here is that the ceiling is incredibly brightly lit and the floor is quite dark and it puts all of the people that are in that space in the dark. And then our proposal which goes to the, the next image, is to really bring in a skylight and allow the, the ground floor to be much more celebrated and that the glass uh, and through the arcade that you see into this public space and you have a wonderful access both to the MTA and to join the two streets together in a, in a way that's uh, celebrated with a green wall, which is uh, an addition to the neighborhood we think is very important that um, it, this part of Manhattan is a little bit starved for green and that it would be a wonderful addition if we could bring this uh, little bit of green relief to the city, uh, to this particular neighborhood, especially as a celebration of the entry in and out of the subway. Next. So achieving this harmonious relationship. So to take you through that uh, kind of piece by piece, we'll go to the next slide. Um, so our goals, again, are to create a uh, contemporary, modern, but yet very contextual and sympathetic um, relationship to 55, that it is, uh, it, it's opening up to the pop space. It remains uh, very um, much a part of the neighborhood and holding the street wall, that the uh, height, the rhythm, the massing of the building uh, continue to support um, the overall composition uh, that exists today, that the materials are slightly adjusted to become a little bit more warm and sympathetic to the, the full street, and that we maintain and improve on the transition to the tower. Next. So here again is the overall. I took took you through this in uh, a little bit of detail before. So we'll talk uh, in the next slides of how that breaks down. So first of all, looking at the plan again in detail, the colonnades change. So at the bottom of the page, you see the colonnade of 55 Wall Street and the existing condition of 60 Wall Street with its uh, bundles of columns of four and two 
that uh, define um, the base of the building and really in some ways prohibit uh, an easy flow for pedestrians through the arcade and have access to the, the pop space. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll see our proposal. The columns are um, a bit smaller in their overall nature. We have uh, gone down to one rather than the bundle of columns. Uh, and But yet we hold the street wall, as you see it on the oblique. We allow for more transparency. And you can see the, the Hanover Street, maybe, uh, Stephen, you can uh, run your, your cursor and you can see this, this one moment where you get this wonderful view and then the opportunity to just see in the public space there is quite nice. We go to the next, uh, next image. Here we see it in perspective, um, kind of with our backs uh, to the Cipriani, if we will, looking in uh, the, the, the columns on the left, the dark glass, the dark framing, um, the reflection of that glass uh, mirroring the, the colonnade behind. And then our proposal is a bit more transparency in the glass, the nature of the green wall coming to the foreground, but really allowing for some transparency to move through. And so the relationship between Pine and Wall Street become more immediate and that the room begin to feel uh, very much part of the public realm. Next. And these, uh, these images try to illustrate kind of that moment where we're moving from the oblique angle where the building at one point becomes, uh, it, it makes transition from being very solid to being more transparent. And by eliminating the dark glass and to get the proper lighting in the space behind the glass, we celebrate uh, the space beyond, but also that the, the columns have an elegance to them in their new configuration that do not constrict the movement of the pedestrian corridor within the arcade. Next. Here you see uh, that, that transition um, at its two extremes. So the Hanover Street to the left, this view where you can see deep into the, the, the building, into the, the space and the depth of the, the facade with the different scales of screens being superimposed within you, within one another and on top of one another. And then on the right, you see the solidity of that uh, colonnade and those series of screens as you, as you experience it on the oblique and how that is really mirroring what happens uh, with the um, 55 Wall Street superimposed columns of Ionic and uh, Printhian orders. Next. Uh, that with its simplicity of, of detail in, in some way, um, we have reinvigorated it with a uh, tooled stone that uh, allows the columns to have a, an elegance and grandeur, which is sympathetic and part of the really historic nature of this neighborhood. Um, really elegant and regal kind of presence but yet allow for a pedestrian flow in the arcade space and, and have access uh, in and around the building, expanding the very tight uh, sidewalk condition in, a, in a, an appropriate way. Uh, next. Um, so this is a, is a kind of a, a fun slide to look at. And here you can see a couple of things. You can see this idea of the, the superimposition of the orders uh, from the McKinley Mead and White edition. And then uh, over on the left is our proposal. And you can see the way that the screens are stacking on top of each other. They're stacking within each other. And there's a sort of this modern uh, reinterpretation of the idea of colon colonnades as a screen. Um, the other thing to take note here is in the original 55 Wall Street is how um, sensitive the second surface is to the colonnade space. At the base, it's more solid. On the upper story, uh, there's a very regulated uh, screen grid wall that's there, but it's very uniform. In the existing condition of uh, 60 Wall Street, it's very jumpy in that back surface. For us, this was something that was really important to clean up. And so you see the scale changing of the screens and it always supports the power and the elegance of the front order of columns. Um, and that was something that we thought was uh, a wonderful addition to the neighborhood. 
Next. Uh, here you see that the oblique view. We're going to take a little bit of a walk uh, through a number of visual uh, images um, up and down the street in this series. So this is the view that we've been talking about before, and we're going to go uh, around the building a little bit up and down the street. Next. So here we've moved to the far side. Um, we are uh, now on the east side looking back to the west, opposite view of what we've been looking at. One of the things that you see here is that you can see the 60 Wall Street um, facade. What, what's kind of interesting about the cityscape in this particular nature is the way that the street kind of curves around a bit. And from this side, it is very, very difficult to see both arcades simultaneously. So um, where you find you find ourselves in this image trying to illustrate the 60 Wall Street Arcade. So we're, we're really got our shoulder up against the, the neighboring building uh, across the street. If we go to the next view or next slide, um, this really is starting to talk about what happens with the street. You can see the way that the 55 Wall Street sort of peels away um, and uh, or peels, uh, orients towards you, particularly in, in the view above, uh, because this position one, maybe you can uh, highlight that, Stephen, as we, we talk about it, that allows the 55 to sort of open up to you from this view. Um, unfortunately, there's the scaffolding there, but uh, 60 Wall Street is just beyond. If we go to the next image, we see uh, that sort of procession as we make our way forward. So we move uh, half a block down, we find ourselves in front of 55. And then as you get to position two, you really get, and position three, you really get the facade to open up. And finally, when you get to position four on the right, you get this wonderful depth into the facade. So you get, it's a both and condition rather than an either or, you get the solidity of the wall and the transparency uh, within the experience of a building. Uh, next. And then if we take the, the other approach uh, coming from um, the, the west and going to the east, you see uh, how the building is, is kind of pulling away from each other. So you can't see the two facades. So it really isn't until you uh, arrive at position two here, rendered in, in um, the blue, that you can actually perceive. So you're halfway past uh, the body of 60 Wall Street before you can actually really get a good look at the perspective of, of the colonnade. Um, so trying to, to just really understand how you perceive the building from the different directions has been a big part of the design and something that we're very sensitive to. Next. And then uh, lastly, uh, you see here, either going across the street and putting your shoulder to the building, you can look back and see uh, the 60 Wall Street facade. Or if you go back to that position too, uh, you can really see the two together. Next. Important part of the original findings, a harmonious relationship had to do with the massing and the organization. Um, here is the original proposal for the, the principal horizontal datums that were defined in 60 Wall Street. And it was deemed harmonious then that those datums were sympathetic in scale and composition to 55 Wall Street. And if we go to the next slide, what you clearly see is that those are virtually unchanged in terms of datums. It's just the architecture and the way that they're defined is slightly different. Um, that remains completely uh, intact and uh, is consistent with the existing condition. Next. Uh, this is a study, again, walking up and down the street a little bit, maybe a little bit from side to side. Uh, of the, the textures and materials that you see. There's a little bit of uh, pink granite, but most of the, the body of the street on the 55 Wall Street side is of a limestone or a warmer beige tone. Uh, 55 is actually the coldest or the gray uh, of the group within all of the buildings and, and the, the, the relationship of the street and the space of the street, this part of uh, Wall Street. 
If you uh, go to the next side, uh, looking across the street, now we're on the 60 Wall Street side, looking at each one of those buildings, you see that there is uh, a, a bit more warmth, a bit more uh, kind of beiges within the composition. The ashlar on the right has a lot of tonality to it, and we're really caught between two fundamentally uh, beige buildings. And so the, the limestone that we're proposing really fits in nicely with our neighboring properties and allows the street wall to kind of really feel like it flows right, right through and down the street, and yet remains uh, within the character of 55. Next. Here you see uh, the, the palette that we're proposing with its tooled stone, with the limestone, the Jura limestone, and some granite that is sympathetic and, and a little bit more durable at the, at the base of the, the walkway within the colonnade, all coming together. And then next. And uh, some very careful concern and development that we've done with tooling of the stone. So it has a richness and an interest uh, as you get closer to it and uh, are experiencing it from more tactile presence. Next. And then a series of slides that really talk about this transition to um, the base of the tower. I get again in the little sections that you see the existing condition and the proposed condition, the setbacks are virtually the same and identical. Uh, the architecture is just changing a little bit in terms of its definition. Next. Um, that, uh, that there were a number of things that we wanted to try to do here to keep the harmonious relationship, the, the stepping back, that there was a, um, a base middle top to the, the overall building. The original building had a, a fairly strong postmodern top and, and uh, podium to it, and a little bit of a jump to the modernist uh, midsection. We're trying to ease that flow from the base into the modernist mid midsection. Next. And kind of going back to this, the, the idea of the being within the cracked mud of this part of Manhattan, what we find is that it's incredibly difficult to actually see the top of the building from the space of the street. And what we're looking at is the looking up from our uh, suggested uh, podium design and those strip windows that create these uh, rhythms or ribbons that run down and how those rhythms ribbons can really flow right into uh, our podium base design and then make the transition and become the arcade in a much more fluid manner as it, as it runs down the face of the building. And if you go to the next slide, you see this kind of uh, in the existing condition, how jumpy it is when you go from the, the ribbon windows to one kind of architecture to another kind of architecture to the colonnade. Next. And so, you know, all in all, I think we are really keen to, to do two things, right? Is to, to celebrate this interior pop space, uh, this pedestrian space, which is really uh, an important part and can be an even and greater part of the neighborhood but also to, to find something that's wonderfully sympathetic to the overall space of the street and to the history of the place and to sympathetic and harmonious with 55 Wall Street. That there's a sense of surface when you see it on the oblique and there's a sense of transparency when you want to go into the building or go into the, the public space that can really animate this part, this neighborhood, this part of Manhattan uh, that becomes a new gateway in and out from the subway that really is celebrated and, and, and something that we think is going to be a, a great addition to the, the city. Uh, next. And then some views looking back and forth, up and down the existing uh, arcade and the proposed arcade. And you can see how uh, it really fits very nicely within the space of the street. Next. And with that, I will return the, the, uh, the floor to the chairman. Thank you. Oh,
Jason, you're a little bit somewhere. I'm not able to hear you. I, I guess I have a question. Talk about that. Hear me, huh? Can Can you hear me now? Yes, Jason, you're coming in and out. We can't hear. Yeah, you're a little better, but not. Okay, so I should go first. Jason said a community board member, Vicki, for you to go first. For me to go first. I believe that's what he said. If not, well, you're still first. Yeah, <laughs> someone else go first. All right. I'll be happy. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I put my hand yeah. Bruce, you want to go first? Uh, I'm actually on two meetings, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> on, Bruce, I'll, just, I'll just go ahead. Uh, well. uh, I'll go ahead. Um, first of all, you you very politely and kindly never mentioned that this is a totally vulgar, gross Trump metaverse building that, of course, like every other Trump metaverse, vulgar, disgusting building in New York has been involved in lawsuits since the day it was erected, and that you could urinate on the building and it would look better, as many people in the POS have done over the last few years, which I've walked through many, many times. Yeah, uh, if, if I just, um, there is a Trump building, but it is not this one. I did want to be clear about this. This is 60 Wall Street. It was built originally by Park Tower and is currently owned oh. by Paramount Group. Well, why don't you buy the Trump building and do something with it? Anyway, I wanted to say I know this building very well. Bruce, I think this is a, a Skidmore Owens Merrill right. building, isn't it? I, I was going to say I walked through. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. Bruce Dinkaloo. Yeah. yeah, it was Kevin Roach. Kevin Roach yes. Dinkaloo. Yeah. I, I walked through it many times, and uh, I just want to say I know what's there. It, you know, it, it's a postmodernist you know, momentary postmodernist design. The the public space is it's awful. Uh, it should be better. It's a it's a great physical space. Uh, it, it's not a little corner. It's it's like you it, it's a whole passage from from Pine Street and it's, it's sort of a Jackson across the street from Seventy Pine, which is a magnificent, magnificent individual New York City landmark. And it's degenerated to a terrible extent. I fear that what you showed for the usage goes from pretty much a working class uh, public space to a gentrified space with the fake Helen Frankenthaler and the bar. And, you know, and it should be accessible to the public as we know it, not just the gentrification. But I personally think that what you've done is uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, massage every single element because there are a lot of it, but I think it's much better. The building that's there is, is, is just... I'm sorry that I that I uh, conflated it with the Trump building, but it's pretty bad. Um, thanks. Bye. Is Jason back? This is Jason. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Much better. Okay. So I just, my question was, um, is everything that we're talking about is going to be under the commission's review? So every, all part of this proposal, anything inside, outside, it's all part of that because it's tied to the special permit? It is really the exterior piece. Oh, okay, so great. the covered pedestrian space, we, we talked about that a little bit just because there's a reason for thinking about how to make the building more inviting. Um, but the... The, the commissions um, will will be focused only on the exterior. Okay, so I think I I some I agree with Bruce. Um, you know, it. I don't think it. I, it's 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 fine. I, I think it kind of looks like a lot of the buildings are looking like at the base that we see going up, kind of all over neighborhoods, uh, and so I'm I'm not so convinced that it, it's doing its best to connect back to these amazing 
you know, Colonnade Row across the street, but really what could, you know, that, that's a special building and, um, you know, it's a lot to ask. So I, I don't think I really have any comments to make, uh, you know, if you guys want to go ahead and do this project, I, I think we could support it generally, but whoever wants to go next. Well, Jared has his hand up. I just, I just have a question for, uh, for Hugh. Are, are these are just curious? Are the, are the columns? I would assume they're structural. Are they, are they structural or purely decorative? Yes, the, the columns that we're proposing are all structural. The existing conditions are, are pairs of columns of only which one is necessary. <clears throat> And and you know to be to be clear the the order one of the things that is really being kept is that the the spacing of the columns is the same as it was in initial. It's just that we're not doing pairs; we're doing singulars. And and um, it is the intent to 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 keep the 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 public open space open. Uh, that's the intent of the client moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Um, I, I do want to thank you. You've um, it seems like you've successfully celebrated the the openness and the of 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 the pops. So um, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> may I, Roger? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I think this is an improvement. Uh, I, I don't disagree that that building has had problems since eighty four. But I, I question taking out the original columns and putting in these columns uh, from 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 the plans you showed us. Yeah. Uh, you don't seem to be maximizing getting much additional sidewalk or or light and air in there. So I, I just wonder whether you shouldn't look at keeping the double columns as part of the original design uh, and doing everything else. I, um, to sort of tear those out and put these in, it seems a big intrusion without really, uh, from what I can see from your presentation, um, you know, a significant advantage. Um, I walk that street every day and, um, you know, apart from the tourists, which are beginning to come back, there's never a problem about walking inside or outside the four <laughs> double column groupings. Um, what was your intent to tear that out, put all the money in, Putting in the single columns without really gaining much uh, light air or 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 sidewalk. Well, you know, the, there's the existing uh, columns. There are you know pairs, as we've talked about. But when they come down to the ground, they actually expand into a, a rather. Uh, I think we lost him. Is, is he? Uh, I'm, I'm here. Right. Okay. Sorry, your screen disappeared here. Um, as the columns come down to the base, they uh, the base expands dramatically, and and you get a cluster. Uh, the the paired columns become one big double base, right? So, the human cannot occupy any of that space, and then you have another set that's right behind it, and that's all at the human scale. So as you're walking around, it becomes uh, you know a, a real impediment for moving around and getting into the, the pop space. And I, you know, I think there is a, going to be a significantly more comfortable sidewalk condition with what we're proposing. And I think there's going to be an, an adamantly more generous flow into the pop space. I also, I, I understand, um, I, I understand the, the, the presence that you can walk through, but I think that it'll feel much more generous in the space of the arcade than it does today. Just because the way the columns come down, they expand in their base and they prohibit moving around. And it also, in terms of the, the pedestrian experience and, and, and seeing other people within the theater of the street, you're blocked by them because they're on the other side of this big, huge base structure. And then they pop out and then you kind of have to step back and you have to step away. So the amount of flow that you have as a pedestrian is is really expanded, you know, pushed away from the columns. You have to be that much further away from them to, to feel comfortable and to feel safe as you're moving around and, and jostling with other people. So I, yeah, I truly absolutely. believe that there's going to be a more comfortable arcade space with the with the new configuration. Uh, 
Okay, but then you've now destroyed an argument you made earlier, which was you want it to be harmonious with 55 wall. And this is a great shot. Look at the bases. Yeah. 55 wall. And I tell you, uh, that flag is is my company's flag. So I'm around this area a lot. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah. the thousands of people that go into Cipriani for all their balls, <laughs> they move them through beautifully, as opposed to, sadly, the homeless people that are living in the pops right now. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure you need that flow. We're not on Times Square here. As I say, the only time there are flow issues in my... Uh, 20 years being down here is when the tourists are are uh, loving Wall Street and mm -hmm. belong very well, you know. Um, so I, I think, it, you know, you, the, the 84 report said uh, you need to be harmonious with 55 wall. And I think you've just de destroyed a bit of your argument by saying you want to have slender columns when you look at those beautiful base columns on on 55 wall. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, yeah. I mean that those that those bases are not very inviting to 55 in terms of yes I understand that when you're invited into to 55 uh Wall Street for a function you're permitted to to penetrate that base. Um, this is a public and, space so there's a there's a flow there. The other thing it just again you know that was very much a, a postmodernist moment in time and the rhythm of 55 is you know looking at the individual columns and yes they have a base they sort of have an elegance and they have a verticality um and 55 did this strange like pairing which honestly i'm not sure that it it, it, it didn't come from you know the architecture of 55 you know it might have been an idea at that time but i'm not sure that the double column grouping really is reflective of what you're seeing across the street <clears throat> I was just I was just addressing the the base because it doesn't yeah, really matter sure. how many columns you've got above ten mm -hmm. feet. But the point was being made that that you want to go to this thinner column because you want more pedestrian flow at the base. However, the landmarks uh, approval noted the harmonious nature of the heavy base on sixty with a heavy base on fifty five. So you may have a problem whether you can get through us. You may have a problem at landmarks pointing out that you've destroyed the uh, uh, approval that they gave you. Yeah, <laughs> they certainly did look at the fact of the rhythm of the columns as being something that was which, which was important, which we do have. You know, I certainly understand you're talking about the base, which is one element of the columns, which they didn't focus on, at least in terms of their written response at that time. Well, Jason, I, whatever we whatever we conclude, I would suggest that we do use this example of showing that the base on the harmony with with 55 is now destroyed which is one of the points that that was important to them understood about that base but i have another question well, just, just uh, so... apart from that i thought the rest of it was was excellent excellent go ahead jerry then i'll follow you Sure. Just uh, so so another question here. The building is 38 years old. So what is uh, the reason that it's coming before LPC is because it's in a landmark district. Is that correct? No, it's only here. It's actually it's not a landmark and it is not in a landmark district. The only reason why it's going back to LPC is that 38 years ago, um, this building bought 360 some thousand square square feet from 55. So right, they are right. Okay. This harmonious relationship, which, you know, doesn't happen very often. Um, I think we, we looked back, we, we never, we did not find a single 74, 79 that you all looked at over the past 10 years. And sometimes it does come up when there's a 74, 711, but I don't think it was even part of any of your reviews for the three special permits that we found under 74 711 because those were actually doing indirectly affecting a landmark. Whereas here we're talking about a situation where the development rights were being used in a new building. Okay, thank you. Um, my, my only other comment, I guess, is um, I, I don't know how successful the original 
uh, roast and glue um, double columns really were in in terms of relating to the plinth across the across the street. Um, <clears throat> I guess my only concern here is that we have a now we've introduced a, a an international you've introduced an international style base with a pomo tower. Um, I understand that you're not really able to see the two together ultimately, but um, it, it does seem disjointed at that point. Um, I again I I mean I. I, I like the celebration of the pops. I love the fact that, that the ground space is open up and I, I, I think that that really is the intention of a pops and I don't want to get stuck on a, a style issue with a non historic building. Um, that that's all I'm going to say about it. Thank you. Okay, Jason, can I speak next? Yes, please Vicky go. Thank you. Well, first I want to say hello to Hugh and thank him for an incredible presentation. I expect nothing less from KPF. Um, I think what we're all struggling with here is exactly this issue of compatibility and adjacency. Uh, the Dinkaloo Tower and those columns, uh, no matter how much we dislike the, the resolution, they did have they, they made an attempt to dance with the columns across the street, including the bases. I think they're chamfered and then the base is a little wider than the column. I, I would say here that we're all struggling with the elevation that uh, I think the columns are just too thin. Uh, if you change it to the elevation rather than this view, the columns, the front of the columns are too thin to dance with this building across the street. And I think that there are several readings that are clashing. Um, the upper zone has a certain proportion that is much wider. And then you go down and then there's this very rigid um, reading on the bottom that is much more uh, compressed. And then these thin columns, and then the back of the elevation on ground floor has yet another, uh, I would say, um, it's not a storefront, right? It's, uh, oh God, after a long day. Um, it, it has a curtain wall reading. There are just too many readings on this one facade, whereas what we all love about 55 is that it has, elements, but they have kind of singular readings, right? You've got a base, you've got a middle, uh, the top has windows, they're all the same, they're harmonious. There's just one too many things going on uh, in the bottom of, the, of this proposal that I think is, is what people might be feeling uncomfortable with. Uh, can you comment to that? Um, hmm. Put the elevation on you so we can see. Yeah. Be yeah here. Here. Even the end view that you showed. This one. Yeah. No, go back. Yeah, the middle image. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so, you know, I. I there's there's obviously different uh, ways in which you know you can interpret something from being a positive or, or being a negative. Um, feel quite uh, that there is a an elegance and a quietness about what is proposed, which is which is truly sympathetic to the overall neighborhood. Um, I think of Wall Street as being a very elegant place, and that. Uh, what we're proposing is, as, as I said before, is a, a series of screens that are, are both sympathetic to the original building in the sense that they're stacked on top of each other. But that that's get... about it, Hugh. They're just stacked. And I'm asking you, the top part 
has a proportion, then right below it, a totally different story, and then below it, a totally different story, and then the column is too thin to dominate and, you know, make a primary, secondary, a tertiary reading. And that's well, what I think is our problem. It, it, it's just yeah, I, I, one of everything. I mean, my my re, my response is that the proportion of all of the pieces work in concert with each other, and that you you see them as maybe completely dislocated from each other, but I see them as a, a series of layers that are folding in and and superimposing on each other to make a rich tapestry as you look into the depth of the thought. So the changes in the scale um, are based on our, a harmony of proportions and a cadence that are all in support of one another as they change scale and they change texture and change scale or uh, change size in the dimensional depth of the the column like here the singular column has a uh, quite a bit of depth to it as you look on on the oblique yes i can Not, read these it's, things yeah. it's, it's fairly thin in this direction and allows for transparency and that's true of all of the various screens whether they be within the colonnade or stacked on top of the colonnade right but your mission is to make a harmonious relationship with the building across the street which is exactly the opposite of what you just described and uh and so like this column i can't tell here in the center it looks like it's not on center it's just the building across the street has a certain rhythm and that and proportion that achieves that rhythm and the space that it creates and here you don't have a column that's thick enough to dominate and you have three different uh elements so while you're saying it's elegant and lovely uh, the solution is not necessarily reflecting that. And listen, a lot of people work really hard on this, so I really appreciate that. And please, you know, understand it's just part of our job. We live here, we, we protect this, we are uh, taking ownership of these spaces that we're going to live by and walk by every day. And so we're just offering our advice. I, mean, I wonder, Jason, if, if we might ask them to explore the detailing on the columns uh, and approve everything else. Um, it, 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 it does change the look and the harmonious nature with 55 wall. And since that was key determinant to getting the extra um, floor space, <clears throat> I think it is <clears throat> right of us to be asking for some further uh, uh, explorations of that one issue and approving everything else? Well, but once you change the proportion of the column, you know, that would be a good time to, like, once you once you change that, uh, it begins to have a primary reading. And if that becomes a primary reading, then by nature of design, you have to start to question what the secondary and tertiary is. And the secondary reading are all these different uh, proportions of openings. Like there's three different screens. And yet in order to achieve the harmony of the building across the street, there's like, you know, for lack of a better word, a singular reading, it's like a block. And here they took them all apart as Gerald calls it, the modern expression of the modernist style. Uh, we all welcome uh, a renovation here. I mean, it's going to be hell. Two narrow streets. I'm sure the neighborhood will go through hell. But, um, you know, if we are renovating, then let's ask these questions now. Um, the, the solidity of the building across the street, which doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily dominated by these columns, it's just the whole building, right? Uh, has a, a, a solidity about it, a stance about it, and uh, you are much easier on this. Uh, you will have stacked relationships of, of different components together, and the columns don't really override the general reading. You asked us to comment on the harmoniousness, and so here we are. So maybe it's not just the columns, Vicky, you make a good point. Maybe it's the facade that needs further investigation and, and thought. <clears throat> Right, less transparency, uh, not because we, you know, transparency is always great, not necessarily, right? Um, it has to be done well. And, you know, this is an office that 
can absolutely do that. Um, the, the, you know, transparency versus solidity. So it's two opposite parts, and we're asked to comment on the harmonious I love you. On now. Can, can I say, I'm sorry, I won't speak again, but let me speak when you. Can you turn off the other meeting, Bruce? It, oh, no, you can hear it. I thought it was his I'm sorry. Oh, oh, man, I thought, uh, I'm so sorry. Yes, I will. Uh, no, I, think, I think it's Lucy's husband. Is it? No, it's no, no, no. It was no. I have no, I have another meeting going. No, this is a serious funny, funny Roger. Fun, funny. It should be. Oh, <laughs> should I don't want to lose quorum, but we're here an hour and a half for one yeah. item. I I would like to say one quick thing. This building, this uh, first of all, I'm mortified that I, that I conflated it with the Trump building, but they're very oh, close to right, each other. Uh, they're so. very very close to each other, and they're the same miserable momentary postmodernist era and i just you know i have to I, I was predisposed to dislike this having seen the the, the package but I, I think they've done a pretty good job this building is a pig's ass you cannot turn a pig's ass into a silk purse there's no way and to further adumbrate the columns to to work differently with the building across the street would, as far as I'm concerned, be a disnification. You cannot replicate those columns. We didn't in, say that, Bruce. In 20, well, let me finish. In, you cannot, you cannot uh, uh, resonate with those columns in 2022 uh, in, in any meaningful way. With You either copy them. I, I don't know what I think, Bruce, what we were saying is don't meddle with what's already there as regards. What's already there is it's just a joke. It's, it's, it's well, a uh, Again, it's degrading it to a okay. okay, so that, that's, that's my piece. And I also admire uh, you've done a tremendous job with the, uh, you know, the public space, which, you know, it's not, I don't know if that's our purview, but it's, it's huge to me. So I have no skin in this particular game. I just know this building very well. And I will vote with the committee, but I, I I don't I think overall this is to be applauded. How about anybody else who hasn't spoken before yet on the committee? Okay. How about anybody who is in here? Do we have any people from the public? Okay. I have my hand up. Okay, go ahead. Oh, hi. So you had one slide and it showed 55 Wall Street and 60 Wall Street both face on with the rendering of what it will be like. And I just think it would be helpful if there was a slide where you showed all three. You showed existing 60 Wall Street, proposed 60 Wall Street, and 55 Wall Street. Yeah, this one. I found this very helpful, but it would also be helpful to have that third image to see what it's like right now. Because I know, as Bruce said, and you guys have said in the presentation, it, it's it's a mess. Sort of each layer is, as you go up, is, is different columns, different amount of spacings. And so, um, anyway, that, that just visually for me would be a a nice uh i don't yeah, know that's a that's a really good point there there is an orthogonal that shows you know shows it in the orthogonal it, which might be a helpful thing which shows the the before and after it's at the very end of the presentation like the second to the last i didn't know if that would be a helpful image to put up because it does kind of show so this is where you can see kind of what's there and all the different sort of weird layers on the left hand side and then the proposal on the right it's not right. quite what you were looking for but it might be a helpful image right yeah i guess that that is somewhat helpful it's not face on but you you see that you're coping with a lot of weird layers already and you're trying to you're trying to make it better <laughs> thanks Jason, should we do a summary? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, it, it's kind of weird because it sounds like we started off kind of liking it and now we're talking about 
redesigning it. And so it, it, it really comes down, down to what Roger brought up a couple times, which is the spirit of the original permit. So, you know, I think that that's what I brought up. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're here to opine on. So, oh, you brought up. So, so, you know, I don't want to make a long winded kind of resolution. If, if we feel in general that the, the new, the proposed arcade is not in keeping with the spirit of the connection that was supposed to be provided for in the special permit, then I think we could leave it at that as far as design and then uh you know it's it's sounding like a, a disapproval which um i'm not sure personally i'm so i, I want to go as far to do but you know I, i'll leave whatever the majority of the group thinks on that you know are we writing an approval or a disapproval are we asking them to come back or, or we're what? asking to come back with a revision so then no no resolution well, what would the re revision be? I mean, I, I, I just want to, if we could go back to the other photograph for a minute, I know we have to wrap this up because we need to get on to two other. Two but other, I already uh, explained what, what it was as clearly as I could. What, what the revision is. Okay. Okay. Could you explain that again? Probably not. It. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I understand. It's been a long day for all of us. Cheryl. I think it's the it's it's the special permit was saying that you need to design the new building, the 84 building, to be harmonious with 55 Wall Street. And that was why they, I guess, ended up with a heavy, strong base. Um, and that certainly achieved them getting 363,000 square feet of footage, which is uh, worth a lot of money. Um, I, the I arguments that were being put forward. Let me, let me just finish. Sure, the sure. arguments being put forward is that th this is a very that you need the flow of the street. You need the flow behind the the columns. Um, like I say, I I'm in the building next door every day, and apart from the tourists, which still aren't really coming back in mass, there isn't a flow problem. So um, I think it's a it's a design issue that 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 you know. The, KFP like that design, and I just question whether uh, we should be uh, al allowing that, given that the harmonious, because the argument is broken that it's not, that is not harmonious. What we're looking at is not harmonious with 55 wall. I think the rest of it is 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 excellent. Would you say it's not harmonious because we don't have this horizontal, this horizontal plinth? Is that because I, I, I I'm looking at this saying, I, I'm, I'm just not sold that that the original 1984 six whatever it was um <clears throat> iteration was as harmonious as as as, as what well, everybody well, believes it is. Was, it's just the base i mean the bases are solid and heavy and they couple them up as double units to i think emulate what 55 wall is which are very heavy bases Exactly. Uh, you, what do you mean by base? Are you talking about the plinth under the actual columns? Or are you talking about yeah, the columns yeah, sorry, themselves? The, the plinth underneath the columns. If you if you show the uh, what's there now, they're they're pretty heavy, uh, I, which is harmonious whether you like it or not with fifty five wall. And that was what the special permit was asking for. I don't think we can argue it's harmonious anymore. So I, I see we have the existing on the left here, but unfortunately the scaffolding is is. Yeah, it's I mean, not back, showing the um, just look where, at the, how the columns touch the, the the ground. Look, look at the size of that person against that column, and then if we get an an existing, um, you know, the columns are no the base the the base the plinth is nowhere near as big on sixty, but it, it's a substantial base. <clears throat> Gerald, we were discussing earlier, as I said, the left building has volume. It's a solid piece. It's carved. It's got solidity. It's got, uh, a, you know, a reading on it. And, you know, the new proposal across the street is not necessarily harmonious because it's only made up of little pieces. There is no primary, secondary, and tertiary reading, which uh, the building on the left definitely, the right has. And, you know, I think good design should. So maybe if they increased, if they thought through, uh, you know, 
what what is the commonality here? You know, what what is this building on the right? Tell us. It's got present. It's solid. It's got these vertical components that are heavy. They're around. Why are we making them? Uh, you, you know, very thin, uh, rectangular, going the opposite direction. So anyway, it's not for us to design, but um, oh. it, on the answer on the question of of harmonious harmonious or harmony, I, I think they're uh, not quite there. I, I said I wouldn't I wouldn't speak again, but since this is a conversation we're having now, I just want to point out on the left that those heavy columns, yes, the volume speaks in the, as we're saying, harmoniously with the columns across the street, but they're Emmett Kelly, or depending upon what generation you're from, Emmett Grogan versions of those columns, they're, they're clown show versions, they're, they're postmodern excrescences, they're undetailed, flabby masses of what's across the street. That's my Right. And usually, oh, usually, that's, that's, uh, I would agree with that. Well, that's us, yeah. usually Roger and I disagree. I guess we disagree on this one, which is, makes me feel uncomfortable. Oh, uh, your reading is correct, but that's part of postmodernism. It's the 80s. It's what we did. So let's not make the same mistake again by rushing and, and doing something we're all not uh, crazy about. And yet we live here and support this. Jason, I think we've. We can move on. I, I think you sure. so, summarize. Well, I, I, for one, like the expression of of the, um, you know, doing away with the plinth. I mean, a plinth in, in specifically in architecture is is about keeping public out typically. And, and I think in this in this situation, it really does oh, no, uh, celebrate the pops. Jerry, that's not really true. And by the way, all we can do is make a proposal and you either vote yes or no. Sure. Uh, so we, we didn't say, for example, these columns, uh, the peers, the practically peers now, they can be in any number of expressions. Uh, you know, um, you want harmony? Why didn't you do round? Like, how is square or rectangle and round harmony? That's what we're here to comment on. How they resolve this, that's up to them. At least this 80s thing made an effort. It might not be an effort we'd like, but... Uh, there was obviously, you know, some effort to make uh, a conversation piece between two buildings. This just has a row, and we see some black shadows, and that's what we have in common. Let's not kid ourselves. What I find very ironic is that in in roughly the 90s, when the SEC building was built in, in Washington, D.C., next to Union Station, it is a Roche, Kevin Roche showed up, gave his presentation. It's an all glass modernist building. And his, his presentation was that he was going to um, mirror the historic district across the street. Um, uh, anyway, he literally mirrored it and that was his nod to, to historicism. So I'm, I'm very surprised about, by, by even seeing this building in the first place. <laughs> Thank you though. Yeah. Okay, so it's an improvement. Yeah. Okay. So, but okay. So, are we writing a positive or a negative resolution here? Or, or, right. We're asking based on the harmonious. Yeah. Okay, we're asking them to come back. Well, that's not a resolution. So, uh, you guys want willing to come back next month and give us another like stab at this, so you can check that box off your list, or you know, you guys tell us. Are you willing to do that? Is this a big rush? It is a big rush. Um, we're, we're moving forward. Um, you know, I think we, we certainly heard a lot. We actually heard, I think, a, to some degree, two different views. Um, I would say that, you know, and this is just um, the lawyer being the lawyer. Um, when the building was looked at in 1984, um, it was looked at as a building and they evaluated the relationship. They didn't manipulate the 60 Wall Street building. So the Peers that were created were peers that were created for a postmodern building, and then landmarks looked at it. So can, I certainly understand, you know, part of a, rec, a re resolution was that you kind of like some of what we're doing, but you think that the peers need to have more gravitas, more solidity. That is something that I would understand. But to come back and redesign, I, we're not sort of in a place to do that at this point. 
I'm so just being honest. Our choice is to make a resolution tonight and vote on it. And if, uh, if, uh, you know, the answer is no, then that what's what we send to landmarks with an explanation that this is not a harmonious uh, expression in our opinion. So I heard a couple of different responses. I, mean, I certainly heard that that that's that's your your view, and perhaps it's with you know unless there's some more manipulation of the columns. Jason, I don't know. I mean, I, I personally, I I could write a favorable resolution that you know asks them to that work on the harmony, but at, then at that point, you know, it's an. <clears throat> Deposit resolution that gets that that says we don't like exactly what the core, you know, I guess objective is of the permit. So, you know, it sounds like me and Gerald kind of are into it, and Bruce a little bit, but you and 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 uh, and Roger are not, and so now we're kind of like a split thing here. So I'm just looking so just maybe we take a straw poll, and then just. That that's how we you know the tone of the of the resolution is either a positive one or a negative one. Even if it says that we don't think it's every part of it's harmonious. Uh, Vera, what's what's your feeling? Yeah, some other people exactly. Sorry, guys, I'm in Flushing at some event, so been listening to everything that you've been saying. Um, I don't know. I mean, if we did a positive resolution, but um, state that all the things that we want with respect to the columns, I would, you know, I can, I would be able to vote for that. But I defer to all of you in terms of this. Okay, that's fine. So that sounds like, okay, I'm, I'm hearing with, I'm with Vera on that. So who else do we have here? Who's the, what? Gerald spoke, Vera, you went, Bruce, you know, uh, that's it. We're at the bottom of the list. So, and, and poor Betty, who's going to be here for another hour. Uh, okay, so, I, I, again, I don't know. I kind of just don't know what I'm writing, but uh, it sounds like we don't think they hit everything in terms of harmony, and it, a lot of it comes back to the columns. So, we're... We don't we don't approve of, of the overall pro project because of the lack of harmony. That's right. Okay, and then and then you know, guys, maybe since time is of the essence, you guys come back to the uh, our full board meeting in the in the open mic time. You could you could talk about how the rest of the fifty board meters uh, members should, you know, actually vote to approve this, and and maybe you could turn this thing around. But it sounds like the seven of us are kind of. Um, feeling somewhat the same it, it, it's 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 not quite there yet okay full question one minute yeah okay so it's second. a motion to reject yep. second i'm sorry is it a motion to reject yes uh yeah i think that the whereas at the end says that we okay. we would not advise them to approve as presented okay jason motion yes. to reject everyone jason yes vicky Yes. Bruce. Bruce. Please don't tell me. Bruce. I'm afraid to say I have to say no. I don't agree to reject. So you're you're opposing. Okay. I'm opposing rejection. Gerard. I uh, yeah, I I'm I'm with Bruce. I, I, I oppose rejection. And you get no. on here. Vera. I'm going to abstain. Who else is that everyone? Well, public member, um, I, I vote in favor. Yes. So you have 1, 2, you have 3 in favor and you have. 2 oppose 1 abstain. Um, well, abstain is a no, so maybe she should consider. Who she Pira. Are you pressuring peer pressuring me to reconsider? No, I don't think we can. Okay. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's even. It's up to you because the vote is taken. What is the result? You it's know what? I don't know what happened. Two what hours happened. now. So I have to. I'll get back to you and let you know. Um, I I can let you know it if because it has to. You have to have.
51% of the quorum vote yes. So if it's three in favor, two opposed, one abstain, it it fails. Doesn't carry. I'll double check with Lucian, but thank you, Deborah. Okay, sure. I'll get so, back to you. You can start with the next one and I'll get back to so you. So applicant, come to the full board, give us a little splash and try and convince everybody to vote against this re negative resolution. I mean, that's what I would do. You guys lawyered up here. You came to this meeting. See it through. Uh, maybe you convince me. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll continue with one. Okay. Oh, so who's what next? What just happened? Wait. I'm sorry. What just happened? We voted. We we wrote. We're going to write a resolution that says ultimately it's not harmonious enough in the spirit but of the. That's not what we just voted on. I don't understand it. No, that's not what we voted on. We rejected that resolution. Am I mistaken? Am I not mistaken? You rejected it. But the we, vote was against. Wait a minute. Was the vote against rejecting the resolution or fifty-one percent approving the res resolution to to object? Betty K has her hand up. Oh, Betty. Uh, the action because of that means that it did not pass committee. It does not go to full board. Exactly. So how could we ask them to come back? Well, I don't know the technicalities. Exactly, you can't. You okay. can't. It, 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 our resolution was rejected. They can't come back to, to to help us help the minority. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. That's fine, but, Bruce. You know, whatever. Okay. I'm not the law. That's for the lawyers that they're paying to to figure right. out, not the chair of this committee. Okay. Okay. I, I disagree with that too, but I'll be quiet. That's not for the lawyers. That's us. That's our job. We just it's not my job, Bruce, to know all the rules. I, I'm suggesting they come back and present their, their case. I can suggest that to anybody I want, right? Come to any public meeting and, 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 and try and convince the group. I, I just, you know, it's not. But no, it's not. There's no resolution. It's not going to All right. So let's move on, Bruce. Let's move on. There's okay. no resolution. I'm guys. not their Goodbye. counsel. I'll see you. The, the next group, please. Well, have we just lost the quorum? Do you see what he does? Are yeah, I think, so? he, no, I think he, I think he didn't understand that. Probably, but, yeah. Well, then we can't proceed, which is annoying, right? Absolutely. Can we get Tammy or somebody on? Because we've had okay, uh, guys. I just other... spoke to Lucian. Oh, what happened? I'm sorry. I missed it. Well, no, uh, Roger just. I'll, I'll let Jason okay, so I spoke to Lucian about the vote and he says, since it's basically the short version, if it's even, you have no recommendations, nothing can move forward. Unless someone changes their vote. Meaning that that the resolution failed. Kind, that's that's not the exact wording, but meaning, yes, that it failed, that it doesn't go to it doesn't go to the full board It's just nothing there. Right. Okay. I'll write. Which to what Betty saying, said. Well, so if, if 1 person votes, if I voted. I hate to belabor this, but if I voted against the, my own resolution, would then it go to the board for their decision? No, then it's failed. Because it's, it's, it's it, it, no, yeah. If, if you, I switched my vote to, to opposed, right? Then you're opposing to, fa to, to, you're opposing. I got that part. Okay, so it will fail. No, Wait, can I say that he's correct? Sorry, I'm getting a little confused. Give me a second. You're right, Jason. So if you change to, uh, you oppose. For the rejection, mm. then okay. it, it goes. Yes, it goes to to full board. So I oppose. I'll I'll change my vote if that's okay. I think that I yeah, I was on the fence anyway, the and then want, they can do whatever they want. Difference. Okay, thank it's you. It's up to them. Okay. You no, know, but you know, Jason, we're here to give a committee opinion. This was about. Uh, but I'm on the fence, see, and I so I want the rest of my community board members to weigh in, and I, I think that. But I'm a, saying that. Bruce has this um, moment. We're here to discuss on harmony. It is not harmonious. We're not here to discuss some personal preferences of a design expression, which is what this boiled down to. Right? I like, I don't like. It's not. Oh, a Vicky, I, I got to disagree with that because it's it's not about. You're right. You're right that it shouldn't be boiled down to a personal expression but um we need we need, there's a disagreement on what's considered hom harmonious in this particular instance i believe uh -huh. and there are two That's different all. buildings and they got 340,000 square feet to dance with the with the facade across the street not to give us a modernist expression 
No, as you call it, international. Hey, Vicky, I hate to interrupt you, but are we moving on with 107 or we're going to try to get someone's We lost quorum. Yeah, we lost quorum. We got to so, figure that out. Okay, so Roger jumped uh, up. Uh, or, uh, Jason, will you me. instruct the, uh, let you know in the executive meeting, we'll have to bring both topics to the exec. Let me go on my, unless you want me to call Tammy and see if she wants to get on. What's the subject matter of the next uh, it's 107 one? It's South Street, and then you have. But what is the? What are they proposing? And we have to see they this one that Betty Betty stayed on for for all this time, also. So what is the what is the project for the one you just said? 107. 107 Doing South Street. Can you a new set of doors or or? I can I can weigh in on that on the applicant if you'd like. Yes. Just just give us the very overview. What is the what is going to be before the commission? So, because if it's a simple one, I'll try and get Camp Tammy. If we have a, a previously approved vertical addition of one and a half stories to a approximately 1818 uh, warehouse building on South Street. Uh, uh, that was approved last year as an office building. We um, have changed the uh, program for the building. The massing is generally the same. We have modifications to the rear facade, uh, the non street visible facade to accommodate the residential conversion. Right. We, we saw this 1. I remember this has the big oversized uh, window in the front that like, what do you call it? A dormer or something? Yeah, not yeah. anymore. Actually. Okay. So really very little visible from the street in the final. What version. does everybody else think about Tammy? Or not, I mean, I'm not, that's not my call. You want to call her and see if she's ready? It, it, no, I don't think we should. Okay, so that's it. All right, so we're going to close up and then, then they're going to have to come to the executive committee. Well, we're going to, we're going to, so are we going to even talk about Betty's resolution? Like this? New yeah, yeah, okay. Talk about we Betty's that? because it's an internal matter. And okay. And we can refine the resolution and then it can just be presented to executive for approval. Okay, Let, so let's do that because it would be otherwise a huge waste of Betty's time to have been here. Um, okay, so Betty's worked uh, up a, 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 an enhancement to the resolution that I poorly drafted. If we could show, if we could share that, Lucy, I think it's very well written, and I only have one potential friendly amendment. But Betty, why don't you walk us through it? Because it's a great piece of work. Yeah, I agree. So I, um, I just want to let the applicant know the board. The meeting is on five nineteen. And I will send you the information. If they're still here. Sure. Here. Okay, and then I'll go to my screen to try to share. Give me a second guys. Sorry. And so what does this mean about 107 South? We'll have to, you should come to the executive committee because that's when we're going to see the project. It was published, the guys. It was sent. The drawings were sent. You didn't look at the presentation. I'm looking at them right now and I have well, looked at it, but I'm asking look. about tonight. What does, what does this mean? This means that the, the, um, we won't the be talking about it tonight. Come, we won't be talking about it and the applicant needs to come to the executive committee. And right? you should come too, because we need your brain, but yes. Okay. Thanks. I can't be there that night. I'm moving that day. So by wonderful, Vicky. Can you see my screen or no? Yeah, yeah. You need to zoom it though. Um, by introduction, I um, I propose this resolution, and um, LPC had not got back to me, and so it was poorly drafted. But I put it forwards. I think what Betty's done here is tremendous. So Betty, why don't you talk us through it? Betty, you're gonna. Betty, we we bored her to sleep with the other stuff. No, I think. She... <laughs> I think she. She's she just muted. Unmute, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Betty. It's wonderful. Uh, it's just, you know, basic resolution work with. It starts out with giving some of the history of what's the point. What is the charge of what the landmark preservation commissioners are supposed to be doing? Uh, giving some of that history, which of course I needed because I wasn't familiar with it. 
Uh, thank you, Sue. I just took things directly off the tape from last month is what I did. Yeah, well, it's fantastic. Oh, well, thank you. So you'll see the reference to what Roger was talking about. The committee had asked Sasha Seely uh, of the commission. You can see that was directly from. Uh, right, but now, 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 but can we not incorporate uh, the note she sent us because Sasha did respond. Um, and so I think the friendly amendment is I'm happy to put in the, 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 the statistics on um, the fact that all commissioners are term are not uh, formally appointed so they could all be removed tomorrow by the mayor and he could bring in a, a stooge uh, LPC to vote through another 250 Water Street. Yeah. Okay, so everyone is on an expired term right now. Correct. So I can I'm happy after the meeting to I don't have I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I'm happy to do that. Whereas uh, they haven't um, um, uh, they haven't uh, where Sasha hadn't responded to 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 edit that to say she has, and here are the statistics. But it's dismal. That there fact, is you don't really need the statistics if you just say that they're all on expired terms right now. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, that kind of does that, and that, of course, then changes the resolve at the end, just the wording a little bit. Yeah, uh, so right. he, don't need to, he doesn't need to affirm his support for them. He needs to pure, merely name. He needs to name them. Even if the reappointment, he needs to name them. That's right. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Is there uh, is there any precedent for and and the process for and what is the process for you know if we, once we adopt this if our board adopts this. Uh, you know, maybe sending it to some other community boards that may or may not feel the same way about this. And before we send it, I just wondered about that since it definitely creeps over the lines of all community boards. No, I think that's a great suggestion, Jason, because we, we've done that in the past. It's been very powerful to have you know, lots of community boards. We should put, you know, uh, whereas we, we recommend sharing this with other community boards before submitting to the landmarks preservation commission for their consideration yeah. i mean just imagine uh, landmark i mean cp2 the hell they went through with soho rezoning and they lost right they didn't want it but uh again it was overridden i bet you they'd love to join and have a voice well, actually, Good since point. I'm on the public toilet working group, um, I know the usual procedure for this because CB5 initiated that. Uh, you'd really go through Tammy and she makes a decision because she would be the one who would invite other community yeah. boards. And is she going to do it via the bur borough board, which comes up next week? That's so that's, nice. that's how this gets done. And she they changed quality of life and executive committee so she could go to the borough board. The biggest problem you might have that she says is that the committee can vote, but full board can't vote before this month's borough board. Yeah. Well, I think we should do that because I think if we got a lot of community boards supporting this, that could really have some weight on the yeah. member and our city council member. The other friendly amendment I had was, an, I, I don't know if you've all had time to, to catch up, but Chris, uh, Chris Marty has managed to persuade the mayor to remove the proposed LPC budget cuts. Guys, this is back if you want to vote on this. That's great. Yeah, so um, I don't know whether we should go back to the other resolution, but I think maybe in this we should say we, we look to council member Mart and others to support us on this initiative because that is huge. I mean, to get the mayor to reverse that reduction, that's really huge. Huge. And needed. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, uh, uh, you know, maybe rather than confuse the resolution by talking about that, that being the budget cut being re re removed, maybe we should say we encourage council member Martin and others to support us in this initiative. I that agree. sounds appropriate. Yeah, and we're not asking for anything out of the ordinary. What we're asking is that they do their job and appoint these people so we know who's there for how long. Right. Well, instead, we now have, uh, in the lack of a better word, chaos, right? 
Mm -hmm. right. And the decisions that are being made are, you know, really hurting a lot of us. Bruce, you're back. You know, when you left, we lost Cora, and now the group is not presenting. And you're muted. I'm sorry. When it came to basic, basic community board procedure, it has nothing to do with your lawyers, and I was frustrated. You, you have to. I know but you can't do that, Bruce. Br Bruce, you, you, yeah. you're the one in the wrong here. You left. We had quorum, and now we didn't, and we had to send home another applicant. So please don't come back. You know, nitpicking my not 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 uh, unknowledgeableness about how the community board runs. It's not fair to come and do that. Really. Are, are we able to get the uh, are we able to get the applicant back since we have quorum? Well, let's let me first I can I'm going to email him now or, or look for his phone number. But would you like Thank to you, vote Mr. on this resolution with Rogers and Betty's amendments? And then I will try to get the applicant. Okay, so Thank yes you. or no? Yes. Yes. So we're approving this resolution and Betty, you're at the amendments for me. Oh. Well, they're not amendments because nothing's been passed. Right. So that's just a technicality. Okay. But if we could answer the little bit, I have in yellow at the very end. Increase the number of commissioners who have served less than X years. This was yes. kind of mentioned, but no number was. To assure new energy and thought. If you all still agree with wanting some new blood rather than reappointing all the same people. Yeah. Yeah. Then do you have a guidance on what kind of number or? Well, Betty, what do you think? They they put uh, a limit on community board members. What is that? Four times. So why not use that as a starting point? Uh, which would be eight years. Yeah. yeah, you need some sage advice on these boards. So what do you think, Roger? Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, uh, you know, match us, match other uh, agencies. I, I do have one question here, though. Increase what does this mean? Increase the number of commissioners who have served less than eight years. Uh, I'm not reading this that it's that it, I'm misunderstanding. We I'm need new blood. It's saying we want new blood. We don't. If we understand been here for that. Eight years. Does, so yeah. when, but once you're there for eight years, you go off. Yeah. Right. If you're this, there this for to eight me reads that we're a request uh, like if there's 10, 10 commissioners, we're asking. To, to have two more come on or something for, I, I'm, I'm just not. I think you might be right. Okay, well, Betty's like. So it's two points. We, we, we recommend increasing the number of commissioners by five, and we recommend term limits, uh, or we, 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 we support the limit on the existing uh, commissioners not serving more than eight years. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Thank you. The the increasing the number of commissioners is, is not in there. So we need to add another bullet point or something. Yeah. What would you like to increase it to? 15. Add five. Add five. So that'll be six. Uh, uh, there's 11 now. So that'll be 16. Why do you want to do that? Because the more the more members right. we have, the more democratic it will be. Yes, yes, you're right. right. Okay, just wanted to check. I I didn't misunderstand. <laughs> and the and the tiebreaker is is whom? The chair. The chair. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank and you. Ed, Ed, well, never mind. Okay, so you want sixteen. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Is it currently eleven? Plus the chair or 10 plus the chair. I just got rid of the number. I, it must be an odd number. It's 11. So if we add 5, that's, uh. Well, you don't have to add, add saying it just to increase the number to 16 is fine. Yeah, right. Tom is Lucy. We got a quorum now. Would you like to come back? See you next week. Yes, I'll send you the information. Uh, oh, Lucy, you're, you're unmuted. That's all right. It's okay. It's doing our business. Apologies, I'm doubling the screen. He said he'll see you at the executive meeting. So should we call this one to question while we're all here? Yes. I make a motion. Second. So we're going to increase the number to 16 and you also want to but term limit to eight years. Yeah. We Same. say sixteen excluding the chair. It, it's seventeen including the chair. It has to be an odd number. 
Right, and there are currently 11, which includes the chair. Yeah, so we need to say an additional five independent um, commissioners. I'll increase the number of commissioners to 16, excluding the chair. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Betty, it's been a long day for a lot of us. <laughs> yes, well, uh, to so get back to work. You also want to uh, term limit? Yep. Correct. Right, from eight years. Mm -hmm. Including reappointments, reappointees. Yep. Right. Roger, is it like eight consecutive years or would yes. we say two no uh two year terms up to eight? Like we have. You gotta apply. Or does do they get appointed and that's no, it. they're all appointed. Yeah, yeah. They're appointed. They're, they don't apply, they're appointed. Right, but eight years, oh, it's a long time, right? Well But some of them are here forever. Uh, we relative to these guys uh, now, it's it's not a long yeah. time. These guys have all been right. here at least eight years. <laughs> Can we vote? Oh, no, yeah, we called it the question. So let, I called the question. We're all in favor. Yeah. Any opposed? Any abstain and recusals, motion carries. Thank Six you. In favor. Thank you. Thanks, Ro thanks Roger. Betty, thanks, thank Betty. you so thank much you. for taking thank over. You. Thank you, Roger. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Betty. Special thanks to you, Betty. That That's a, a terrific resolution. Thanks, Betty. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right, good night.